Hello, Robert here again, and this time I'm just going to talk a little bit more, mainly about how you might use this microtonally. So, um, first of all, um, and before I do that, I just want to explain, in case anybody wondered, what this greater than sign is about. Those are accents. That's the way that accents are done in ABC notation. And here we've got the accents, then this one, which is an alternative accent in Bounce Metronome, but in the ABC notation, it, it, it's, it's already used for a sharp, and that is used for a flat. And we don't actually have any sharps and flats here, but if we need it, we prefix them, the note number with those. And that is about all that there is of um, ABC notation, well, there's these UZ for rest. And that is, and plus the triplets, which is the same as with Bounce Metro, that's pretty much the whole amount of the ABC notation as it is so far implemented in Bounce Metronome. So now to explain about how you would use this with the uh, microtonally, then you we've got this um, drop list of scales and you can make your own necessary descriptions and intervals. So at the moment it's set to well-tempered scale past time and you, you can use you can just use subtle temperaments like that, quarter comma mean tone, or you can use equal temperament. But now, uh, so I'm just going to play this. This isn't going to sound, um, sound one phrase is going to sound quite strange, but it's just to show you, I'm just going to transform this silent night into different tunings. And the idea is that you, just to show how you could notate anything, if you first choose the tuning, you use ABC notation, and then you transform it into your tuning. So the sounds that come out are completely different from what you would expect in the notation. So uh, just to go back to the notation, where we've got this C, D, E, etc., then you would go um, C, C sharp, D, D um, E sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp. Those would play the notes not one, two, three, four, etc., in your scale or your arpeggio. Um, so we've got the preset list of scales here, and we've also, and so now if I change it, for instance, to a gamelan tuning, so this is going to sound very strange, it's not going to sound like Silent Night at all. So just to show you how it changes. Obviously, uh, you you compose that tuning, uh, you you compose especially for that tuning, rather than just take um, some uh, random tune and move it into those tunings. But some people do sometimes do what I just did there. Uh, just it's kind of fun thing to do, and sometimes you get interesting surprises. So you could just take something that's composed for one tuning and pop it into another, and just see what happens. But then, so if you're composing any of these tunings then it just completely changes how these notes are interpreted. So your G is no longer G. Your, your C is the first, is the one over one, whatever it is, little c or whatever. The C sharp is the next note in your tuning, whatever it is, which could be anywhere. You can, in Bart's metronome or TuneSmith, you can set that to be any tuning you like, in any frequency from the minimum lowest note 
you would be in here to the very highest note. And then you could so you could set C to anything, C sharp to anything, D to anything, D sharp or E flat to anything and so on. And then once you've done set that all up, you can now use the, these letters C, C sharp, D, um, E flat, E to play the notes in your tuning. And they no longer play um, the notes that you would expect them to play from the letters that you're using. But it is just still a way in to composing. And once you get used to it, it becomes quite an easy way of composing in these tunings. You just have to get used to reinterpreting the letters to mean the such and such note in your tuning. And because we are very familiar with C, D, E, etc., then it, it, it actually, it, if you are familiar with, with this notation already, ordinary, ordinary notation, then this kind of translation, some people anyway find that quite an easy way of doing composing. Though, of course, if you got an actual player to play the note, you would have to then write it out for them in, uh, if they're playing musical instruments, then only if they're a keyboard instrument can they read this. What they call a scordature tuning is a bit like if you're on a stringed instrument, if you had a stringed instrument with a separate string for each note, then again, you could just um, retune them as you like and then label them as C, C sharp, D, um, E flat, D, etc., all the way up and then tell the, the performer to play the notes as if they were tuned. Like take a harp, for instance, a harpist, a harp player was used to playing the harp and is used to it being tuned in 12 equal. Then if you were to give them another harp, but retune to your tuning, whatever it is, and then show them this notation, and they would just play CD, just read, they could be able to read it, sight read it just as they would normally, but it would come out with completely different pitches, quite surprising pitches but the hand-eye coordination is exactly the same. That's also the same for a keyboard instrument. So these could actually be playing scores for either keyboard or harp or glockenspiel or anything like that, with you know, beaten, beaten uh, percussion instruments and so on, melodic percussion and so on. But when it comes to things like uh, st uh, string players and uh, wind players and so on, then it's too, a lot of mental recalculation for the two to give them. You probably have to give them a different kind of score for people playing these instruments. But on the other hand, for the keyboards and harpists and so on, this scordature notation is actually easier in many ways than getting them used to uh, some strange set of accidentals that they've never seen before. Anyway, so uh, that, that's, it, that's that.